Hey, it's Pastor Steve speaking. You're here with me in my prayer room and I uh, just want to encourage you. I'm here lying in my hammock and I'm praying and spending time with God. And uh, if you've never been here before with me, I want to encourage you. Some amazing things have been happening. People have got into a movement of allowing God to do things in their lives and watching some amazing miracles come to pass. So we've seen believers starting to to do this thing I'm talking about. And uh, the point I'm making is from Mark chapter 1, verse 35, Jesus got up well before light. And as you see here, I didn't do that this morning. It's uh, already light. But he got up well before light. And while it was still dark, left the house, found his way to a secluded place, and gave himself to prayer. And I'm talking about prayer, about connecting with God, about it being exciting and not boring. And today I want to share a very simple, simple principle with you as we pray. And we're going to pray through it. We're going to connect with God, allow the Holy Spirit to do some amazing things. And I just want you to be so excited, the the fact that you're joining with Jesus and you're joining with many other believers that have been watching these these videos on YouTube. And uh, I just want to encourage you, things have been happening. I've been hearing from people, people have been telling me and sharing that, that the wonderful things that are, in, that are going on in their lives because they've started to enter in to this process. So, hey, I welcome you to give give um, some comments on this video and share with others and uh, also contact me uh, and, and let me know all the good things that are happening in your life because you have entered into this real living process of connecting and engaging with God's miraculous. See, miracles are a wonderful thing. They're an evidence of of the reality that God exists. <laughs> I don't think that there's any greater uh, evidence other than the Bible itself. The fact of, of us having miracles in our lives, you, you can't explain away a miracle. And at the same time, you can't explain a miracle. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you, be involved, join with me in this process today and watch what happens in your life. And uh, it's in the process as you go through these videos every week, and just continue to watch, continue to go in and in, enjoy the encounter. And as I pray through this video today, I want you to pray too. As I read the verses, as I go through the study, I, if you can, I'd like you to take notes and, and uh, review it this week. And this one simple principle that I share with you today, I'd like you to uh, put into practice this week and watch the miracles happen. Hey, let's pray together. Welcome the Holy Spirit to move on us as we do this. Holy Spirit, we love encountering you. Because <laughs> you're the glue. You're the, the river that connects us and, and joins us to the Father and helps us to explore the reality of Jesus in our lives. This is not a religion. This is a lifestyle and it's a relationship. So, Holy Spirit, we want to relate to you. We want to know you and receive you right now. We believe you. We welcome you. We let your presence fill us and overflow our lives and, and take us to a place that we haven't been to before. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Help us to explore the avenues of your grace and your power and your miracles that you have in store for us through the Bible, through our prayer journey, and through our experiences. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus name. <laughs> hey, let's do it. There's a principle I want to share with you today and and then we're going to get into the principle and pray through it and go deeper. So how to flow in God's fullness is, is what I want to talk about. How to actually be filled with God's fullness and how to flow with it. And I want to share a Bible verse with you. And before we get to that verse, I'd like to, to, to share you a little bit about this is coming to God, drinking of his presence, letting him be the fullness in our lives, letting him be the one that overflows us. And see, are, are you sick of living in your own power? <laughs> are, you, are you, you know, frustrated with, with um, just trying to do it in your own strength? Well, I want to share how easy and simple it is to let God fill us up and let his overflow be the power that generates miracles in our lives. It, you can't generate a miracle. You can't heal anyone. But when God is filling us and now overflowing us, it's all of a sudden it's his power that is doing the work. But very rarely do believers ever get to this place because it's so simple. 
and they think, oh, yeah, it's so simple. I know about it. But do you practice it? Let's, jo- let's dive in today and, and enjoy this. So here it is, John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. And we'll see what Jesus says. And so then on the most important day of the feast, this is the feast of tabernacles Jesus is talking about, all about relating to, having a relationship with, having a connection with God, having an intimacy, having a fellowship. And that's what it's all about, but relating to, being at one with God. This is what this, is, this whole uh, experience was all about. This feast was about communication and communing with God. So then on this last day of the feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, the the whole relationship feast with God, having an intimate relationship, that's what it's talking about. The last day of this feast, Jesus stood and shouted out to the crowds, All you thirsty ones, come to me. Come to me and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. And so Jesus was prophesying about the Holy Spirit. The believers were being prepared to receive. Now we have already received the Holy Spirit. If you've opened up and let the Holy Spirit fill you and you have your gift of prayer languages and all those wonderful things that happen, you've already received. So, but the Holy Spirit, had not yet been poured out upon them because Jesus had not yet been unveiled in his full splendor. And so when we look at this and we understand this, we're talking about Jesus and he's saying, come to me, come to me and drink. And then goes on to say, believing in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you. There's a process here that we're talking about. And Jesus is saying to all you thirsty ones, come to me and drink. And so what he's saying there is come to me and drink and be filled, be filled up. And then all of a sudden you'll you'll be overflowing. You're not just filled, but you're overflowing with rivers of living water, rivers of life. You see, many believers just live life as a normal human being. And Jesus didn't didn't say for us to do that (laughs) because you get thirsty and dry. The life that you live wears you down. It's like a snail that's, that's going along. But as it goes along, it's leaving a trail behind itself and it's wasting away as it travels. And that's like us humans. As we travel through life, this planet is a dry place. It's like a wilderness. And God's presence wants to come around and fill us to overflowing to refresh us. And so why do we need this filling and the refreshing? Because there's a, a, a something powerful that Jesus spoke about here. It's not about just coming to him and being filled up. There's a flow of God's power that will flow through your life if you allow him to fill you to the point of overflowing. Let's jump into this verse one more time and then we'll get into the study and the prayer time. All of you thirsty ones. So first you see he's talking to the thirsty ones, the believers, the ones who are following him. And we're talking about rivers of living water, rivers. And so an abundance. So all of you thirsty ones come to me. Come to me and drink. And so what he's talking about there is coming to Jesus because out of Jesus flows a river of life. The abundant life flows out of Jesus. So there's only one place where you can come and drink and get this abundant life. It's your personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. And remember, he's speaking on the last day of the feast. And uh, it, was a, it was the Feast of Tabernacles. And there's the, the original word, but it is the Feast of Tabernacles. And that whole Feast of Tabernacles was wrapped up in and related to having an intimate, personal relationship with God, knowing him personally, connecting with him, being at one with him. And on the last day of the feast, he spoke about this. It was actually at the time in the temple when they do a specific ritual of with water. And, and, he's, and, he's, and he's talking to them about the reality of this is, I will give you the river of life. So what I'm saying here is there's only one place that you can come to drink, 
to get satisfied. It's, it's not about reading all the books in the world, though there's some good things in books, revelations. It's not about watching all the YouTube channel videos on the world, though watching this video, if, if I'm talking about something life-giving, can start to connect you to life. It's all about coming to the author of life, the source of the river of life. The river of life flows, as we know from the book of Revelation, flows from the Lamb of God and from the throne. And Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God and the river of God flows from him. And when he's in your heart and when you're overflowing with him, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And so we've, we come to one person to get away from our dryness, and that is Jesus Christ, the only one true living God. And um, he's the way, the truth, and the life. So all you thirsty ones, come to me. That's what it's talking about. The thirsty ones, because we live in this earth, come to me, Jesus. And he says, come to me. Again, the second time, come to me, come to me. And, you know, he's, he's re re really re-emphasizing this. Come to me, come to me and drink. All you thirsty ones, Come to me, come to me and drink. And so drinking is all about receiving the refreshing from Jesus' encounter. And that's why I worship God. I come and spend time in worship. I spend time in the Bible. I spend time in prayer. And I'm not trying to give to God. This, this is a thing that you've got to really understand. You're not coming to God to give to him or to serve him. You're coming to God to receive from him. Remember when Jesus got up in Mark chapter 1 and verse 35, he came to a secluded place to give himself to prayer. And when he gave himself to that, that devotional life of prayer, he was there to receive. And that's what I want you to do, to flip, flip your prayer life on its head, to turn the thing around. We're not coming to pray to God. We're not trying to give God something. We're coming to prayer to receive something. And when you receive, you become a true believer and you truly believe. Before you come to God every day, you're not truly believing in him, <laughs> though you are born again and you're going to heaven. But what I'm talking about here is something Jesus was getting to. He says, all you thirsty ones, come to me, come to me and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you. This believing in is so powerful. Because the thirsty ones, the dry ones, the believers who haven't spent time with God, or the Christians, I should speak, uh, who haven't spent time with God, find it very hard to believe. That's why they get frustrated. That's why they get angry. That's why the flesh overcomes. That's why temptation. That's why things don't turn out right. You know, the Bible says God turns all things for good to those who love him and are called according to his purposes. The Bible also says that our enemies will become our friends. Well, even our enemies will become at peace with us when our ways please the Lord. There's nothing more pleasing to God than when we come to Jesus and we come to drink and receive. We don't come to God to give him prayers to make him happy. No, we come to God to receive right now. So let's pray this. Let's start off today and pray this before we go any further. Close your eyes and let's pray together. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we come to you to drink. We come thirsty and dry, but we come to drink, to be satisfied, to receive rivers of living water right now. Jesus, I pray for everybody watching and receiving on this YouTube channel right now. We're coming today to give ourselves to prayer, to receive, to take hold of you, to believe, to receive, to be refreshed, to, be, to, to gain revelation, to be strengthened and refreshed so that we can be filled up and overflowing with rivers. Help us to receive revelation. Help us to believe you. Help us to do this every single day in Jesus' name. So how do you know when you have come to God and you are refreshed to the point of being full? You don't want to leave his presence. You don't, you don't, you don't want to leave. It's, it's only when you're thirsty and dry that you think this is a waste of time. It's only when you're caught up in the, in the soul realm and you're not truly weaned as a little child from yourself. 
the we are to be weaned from ourselves and and drawing on God, needing God, believing in God. When we're not relying on our own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. And this is the place where you truly get to the place of believing. And so I worship and I read the Bible and I pray until all my negatives have gone away. <laughs> I worship, read my Bible and pray till all my negatives have passed away. They've been washed away. They've been, they've been flooded away with God's river of his divine presence. So I want to encourage you. That's when you know, when you're in his presence and you don't want to leave. You say no, but it's not at the place. You're still dry when you're saying, oh, no, I haven't got enough time. We've spent 15 minutes already, Pastor Steve, on this YouTube channel. And I haven't even got to the principle that you want to tell me about. Oh, we're getting there. And so I want to really challenge you to get to that place in prayer where you're like a sponge and you're soaking and receiving until you're living a believing life. And that's what Jesus said. He said, all you thirsty ones, how do you know when you're thirsty? Well, because you're living in doubt, unbelief, frustration, stress. Things aren't working out. They're not turning. All things are not turning together for good for you <laughs> because, because you're living in your own strength and your own power and your own resources. So all you thirsty ones, that's who he's talking to, all of us, come to me. Come to me and drink. My pastor, Pastor Neil, says, <laughs> he says, why do we have to come and drink? Yeah, but well, because we leak. Every day you leak. You're just like that snail that's traveling, traveling along and leaving a snail trail. <laughs> you are walking through life and you're leaking every day. That's why we need to come back for the refreshing. Every day your mind is being filled with, with nonsense when we're in the world. We're, the world is not God's heavenly kingdom. His kingdom will come, his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven when you allow his revelation to be the thing leading your life. Not the thoughts of this age, not the things of this world, but the things of his kingdom. And that's why we come to Jesus to drink. So he says, all you thirsty ones, come to me, come to me and drink. Remember, come to Jesus and drink. It's not about you going to even just this, this YouTube to drink. I hope while you're watching on this YouTube and we're praying together that you are connecting with Jesus. Just close your eyes again and just say this, Jesus, Jesus, I open my heart. I open my heart and I connect with you. I connect with you, Jesus. Fill me to overflowing Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And you know, as we do this, he's going to fill you to overflowing so you won't be dry anymore and you can be a believer, living in belief, faith, confidence. Because when you speak as a believer, things happen. When you speak dry, nothing happens. And so let's go there. All you thirsty ones, come to me, come to me and drink. Make sure when you come to him, you drink. Make sure when you come to him, you're not trying to pray and please him. You're not trying to do your penance. You're not trying, <laughs> you're not trying to, you know, satisfy some guilt or shame. No, you come to draw. You come to receive mercy, to receive grace, to receive his filling, to receive his refreshing. That's why Jesus died for you so you could tabernacle, so you could come to this place and receive rivers of living water. That's why he got up on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles and said that. Believe in me. See, that's when you start to believe. And then that's when the rivers of living water will burst out from within you flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. And so now that I've said all that, we come to him to drink. So we're no longer thirsty. So we're at a place of believing. When is that? When we are full of it, <laughs> full of his river, when we're overflow, when we're, when we're drowned out of the death inside of us and we're living in life, we're drowned into life, into living and now. We're refreshed and we're believing. Do you feel refreshed right now? Do you feel like you believe? 
Help our unbelief, Jesus. Help us get filled up a little bit more. Just a little bit more, Jesus. Just a little bit more, Jesus. Fill us up a little bit more. Drown out. Come on, keep filling. Keep filling. Keep filling, Jesus. I'm praying for you. You believe right now. Fill us, fill us, fill us to overflowing. Drown out even the little 1% of doubt, the little 1% of unbelief. Help me to be a full-on believer. And now overflow us. And so when we get to this place where we're believers and we're living in that flood, all of a sudden something powerful happens. And that's what we're going to discuss today. Now, for the last 10 minutes, we're going to discuss this principle. And so we look here, come to Jesus and drink, live out of the overflow is what I want to talk about today. How do you live out of this overflow? This is the principle that is going to be so powerful. Let me explain this. When you look at living out of the overflow, I might draw some pictures in my little prayer journal here. I have my little journal here and I'm going to, how to flow in God's fullness, how to live out of the overflow. So look at this. You might get a glass of water and it's a small glass. You might get a glass of water and it's a big glass. Or you might get a glass of water that's a massive glass. And now when they're empty, they're all empty. Now, which one takes the fastest to fill? Obviously, this is the fastest. The second fastest is this, and the third fastest is this. Okay, so these are vessels. These are cups. Now, when I get a river, and I have a river flowing by, that river will fill up each cup. And, of course, it will fill the new believer first. <laughs> and as you mature in Christ, your cup gets bigger. You're able to contain and receive more of God, more revelation, more understanding, more relationship, more knowledge, more, 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 more. So, you know, yes, it might take you, you know, some time with God. And, and you know, you're taking your life, you're expanding your vessel. I've talked about that principle before, expanding your cup, expanding your vessel so you can walk along and carry more of God. But let me talk to you about living in the overflow, living how to flow in God's fullness. So this river is God's fullness. This river is pouring past. It's going in a direction. The river is pouring past. When the river fills that vessel, the river fills that vessel, that vessel. That's it. It fills every vessel. But now the overflow is just the river. Whether you have a small cup or a medium-sized cup, or a big cup. When the river fills it, it's going to overflow it. When the river fills this, it's going to overflow it. When the river fills this, it's going to overflow it. So really what's happening is you're not living out of your own capacity. You're living out of God's infinite capacity. And so what I'm trying to say here is the only way God's infinite capacity can be seen in your life or his fullness can be seen in your life is when you get to this place of being filled up. When you get to this place of, of getting out of unbelief and out of doubt and out of negativity, this is the principle I'm trying to tell you today. The reason why I worship, the reason why I pray, the reason why I spend time with God is I don't want my little cup to be half full or my medium or my large cup to be half full, half full. When it's half full or empty or dry, you're not living in the overflow. You're just living in the place of need. You're living in the place of, I need you to keep filling me, God, because I'm struggling with unbelief. I'm struggling with things. I, I'm just struggling. And when you know you're struggling, you're not overflowing. You're not living with the flow. When you're full, when you're believing, now God's river is flowing out of the innermost being. And where does it flow from? Out of your belly, out of your innermost being, out of the place of greatest need. It's a, it's a physical need, the belly. But out of the belly flows the rivers of living water. And at that place where you're at the point of full, that's where his river overflows you. When you're living in the overflow of God, that's when it's his power doing miracles. Then that's when it's his power moving mountains. That's when it's his power raising the dead. When you're dry and unbelieving and half full or empty, there's no power overflowing. It's all having to flow into you to fill you. And the sad thing for many believers is they never get to the place of living a full life daily. 
They go one day half full. They go the next day dry and empty. They go to the next day. And, and how do you know if you're full when you don't want to leave the presence of God? And so it might take you a week of trying to come to God or spending some time with him and then actually breaking through to the place of, of enjoying, of spending time with him, enjoying the encounter, being overflow, being filled. And now God's overflowing river is flowing through you. The river can't flow you past you and out through you if it has to flow into you and, and fill you. And that's what I was trying to explain with these cups. God's river can't pour out and do miracles to people around you, the circumstances around you, if you're so needy that all he's needing to do is just keep filling you up. But when you get to the place where you are full and the overflow happens, miracles happen. So let me share a little bit more from my notes. The small cup or the large cup will produce the same overflow, which is God's capacity. It's not about your capacity as a believer to, to perform miracles. No, it's your response to be filled with God every day. And now let his power flow around you. Let him do the work. And so this small cup, large cup, medium sized cup doesn't matter. It's not about being fulfilled. It's not about just the filling. It's not your capacity. It is all about his overflowing abundance, doing the work. People experience God's fullness only when you are full and overflowing. So people around you is what I'm talking about. Someone, your mother, your father, your family members, people you're believing for, for miracles, healing, salvation. They only start to experience this when you're starting to live a full overflowing life. And so because the overflow is Christ's capacity, we're not looking at your little capacity or your medium-sized capacity or your large capacity anymore. <laughs> this compared to God is, is so small. We're looking at God's infinite capacity to flow past you once you're full. Once that cup's full, that cup's full, that cup's full, there's no more to contain. There's nothing else. And the only thing that can happen now is it's going to flow. It's going to flow. It's going to flow. That's why Jesus said, come to me, come to me and drink. Believe in me so the, that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. And Jesus wanted each one of us to know this is the way we live the abundant life. This is the way we live overflow. Let me keep going in the notes and, and explain. And so God fills us to our capacity and then he gets to overflow his fullness through us. You take a small, medium or large cup to a river and each are filled at different rates. But the overflow is the same rate. The overflow is the same rate. Same flow because it is the river's capacity that we see. So whether they're a brand new believer, uh, uh, you know, a, a young believer or a mature believer, it's got nothing to do with the size of your capacity or the maturing of you. It's got to the point of you every day coming and having an intimate personal relationship with God to be filled, filled, filled. So a, a brand new believer can see miracles because it's God's overflow that produces it's this infinite, deep, wide river of grace, anointing, miracles. River of life is what we're talking about. It doesn't take much to overflow a brand new baby believer. And so in your time and your presence with God, the issue is having that time. I know that if I have time every day, it happens quicker for me. So I'm spending time with God every day. My, my, my capacity is, is basically here. And so I only take a little bit to fill up and overflow. But if I run dry, and I spend weeks without God, weeks without, I'm, I'm empty. And it takes me a long time. To, but a brand new baby believer, they can get filled up pretty quick and they can start seeing miracles. That's why you see baby Christians seeing miracles all the time. And that's why you see that, that you, you, you see a, a, a mature believer and they get frustrated. They forget this simple principle. Just get filled up and let the overflow do all the work. See, it's God doing all the work. He just wants our intimacy. He just wants our time. He just doesn't want us to live dry and frustrated. Father, we just ask you to help us not to be dry and frustrated. 
We just ask you to help us every day come to you and soak in you and be refreshed and allow your overflow to do the work. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace. So we've got a few minutes to finish up here. And it's all about God's capacity that you see. See, manifestation, what we see of miracles, doesn't happen until we've been filled to the place of God now doing the work. God doing the overflow work. And so when we come to God and are filled, it's his capacity, his miracles, and his fullness of flow that people experience afterwards. People experience this if we are full. And so... That's why none of us can truly live without God's fullness filling our lives and overflowing. And whether you're a brand new baby, a medium aged believer or a mature believer, every day you need this filling. So that's always God's overflow doing the miraculous. And so it's God's river overflowing in our lives that changes lives, not our capacity. That's what keeps us reliant on him. That's what keeps us humble. That's what keeps us in him. It's all him. It's all him. It's all him, not us. And so I want to encourage you. We're not relying on our, our length of how long we've been a believer, how much we know as a Christian, and how many past experiences we've had with God. It's about what you've done today so that you're not thirsty, you're not dry. And this encourages me that a brand new believer or anyone at any level can see God's miraculous moving in their lives. And if you haven't seen it lately, it's not, your, it's not an issue to get upset about. Just let him fill you and then let him flow. And so it's God's river overflowing in our lives that changes lives, not our capacity. We cannot help anyone. Jesus can heal everyone. Did you look at that? We cannot help anyone. Jesus can heal everyone instantly. Do you know Jesus can heal instantly? Isn't it frustrating when you're dry as a believer and you don't see things happening? When you know that God can do it instantly and this is the solution. This is your answer and how to flow in God's fullness. It's all about his fullness. You just get filled. It is his flow overflowing out of us. We must allow this overflow of his miracle fullness to change lives around us. So this is how we serve him and we serve him well. This is how we are led by the spirit. This is called overflow ministry. This is so you don't get dry and thirsty and frustrated. So we minister and live out of the overflow of his fullness. And this is what keeps me coming to him. Because I simply know that I live for him. In him we live and move and have our being. His overflow refreshes us. Let me pray for you today. Father, I'm asking you to stir us with this principle that I just shared today. And stir our prayer lives and our worship time and our Bible reading. And stir us to understand everything we do in connection with you is filling us up to the place of overflowing. Help us to be so excited in your presence. Help us to be so filled with you and overflowing that you minister to people all around us and we welcome your flow right now to touch hearts in the streets, touch hearts around us. Like on the day of Pentecost when that happened, 3,000 were saved in one day. I'm asking for you to help us to live in the fullness this year, 2021. Father, we're learning this principle. And we're going to walk in it all year long to have the fullness of God around our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. I encourage you. This year, have a great year. Don't forget every single day to be filled with his presence. If you're liking these videos, give them a like, give them a thumbs up, share them with your friends online. And if you haven't subscribed already, I welcome you to press the subscribe button. If you have subscribed and you press the subscribe button, you'll unsubscribe. So <laughs> make sure you're subscribed so you can get these videos every Thursday morning. Be refreshed and encouraged. God bless you. See you again real soon. Bye for now.